In week two, we'll be discussing Newton's second law of motion, which it's also known as the momentum principle. And it is a tried and tested law because you cannot uh, have any doubt or disprove it with any example. And it's a given fact and it's accepted as a fact in physics. Newton's second law explains this, the net force on an object, uh, which creates the resultant direction of a, an object or a system. For example, when talking about vectors, we talked about swimming across a river in one direction with a stream pushing you to the side, creating a resultant vector that would be to the left, like the hypotenuse of a triangle. What ended up happening was the net force was greater pushing to the left than it was to the right because the current was pushing to the left, as well as the net force from the swimmer swimming across the river was greater than the water pushing against her. Therefore, it pushed up and to the left downstream a little bit. That is an example of where the net force will take you. I'm very confident in my abilities of net force because of my AP physics course in high school. Therefore, I'm not too worried about the content, although I would like to strengthen my abilities just to make sure I have the foundation correct as we move along in this class in the fall semester. In conjunction with it, uh, with forces, it's important to understand how mass interacts with force and mass is just the matter that makes up something and altogether that works with force. And a force cannot exactly exert force on itself. And this is a concept that in principle I understand, but in practice sometimes I have a tough time making sure that I'm fully grasping the concept. For example, uh, pushing against myself. I'm not technically exerting a force. My hand is pushing this hand and there's no real normal force that's separating. That's the part that kind of confuses me. However, there are a lot of conceptual videos on YouTube that I can access in order to watch, uh, such as uh, or Ochem, Teach Ochem Teacher and Khan Academy is always a go-to because of high school classes. As well as uh, net forces, Newton's second law explains momentum in principle, and momentum is something I find super interesting and very simple for me. Uh, momentum is simply mass times velocity, so mass and velocity are complementary of each other. It's a lot of fun to work through because you can talk about a large car hitting a very smaller car and the different rates and how much energy is transferred, and the energy transfer is just something I take an interest to. One thing that I learned in the videos were, was about drag and how simple it actually is to understand. I was always nervous about drag because of high school physics, just ignoring and disregarding drag or resistance in any way, shape or form. However, I knew it was always a negative force per se in the opposite direction of motion. So if something is moving this way, obviously drag would be pushing the other way, but the edX videos kind of explained it in a much simpler way that I'd never thought about it as just a force of velocity and however the constant, I guess, would be uh, the coefficient of it. And when they said velocity, it made sense because when something is moving faster, there's a lot more drag on it. And I related it to cars because cars is something that I kind of understand a little bit more than just like pencils or something flying in the air. So I thought about when you're driving super fast, say like 80 or 90 down the freeway, then you're pushing a lot of air out of the way with your car. And then you kind of create a void behind you that now you're pulling. So it takes a lot of energy for your car so you don't get really good mileage. Conversely, if you're going say 10 miles an hour, you're going super slow and it's, you're barely even breaking the wind. You're moving, the wind's kind of doing its own thing. So you're fine. And that's why cars are kind of optimized for a certain speed on the freeway and a lot of cars perform really well like 55 miles an hour and finally to kind of wrap it up uh, one thing i do need to work on a lot are springs uh, i'm confident with springs enough to explain it to somebody however i know it can get complex as far as spring constants go but i know there are ab there are countless resources because i learned about them in calc 2 uh obviously ap physics so i know such uh, such things as Khan Academy, Flipping Physics, and any Calc 2 resource will be able to kind of review uh, springs, Hooke's Law, constants, and stuff like that.